The following apparatus was used by a group of learners in an investigation to find out how surface area affects the rate of reaction between excess solid magnesium ribbon and dilute nitric acid with a concentration of 0.05 mole per decimeter cube. During the reaction, the gas formed is collected in the measuring cylinder. The balance equation for the reaction is given to us right here. The summary of the investigation is tabulated before. So let's take a look. We have experiment 1 and experiment 2 where the mass of magnesium is the same. What is different is the state of division as we are investigating the effect of surface area. The results for experiment 1 are plotted on the graph below. We can clearly see the graph here where the results are plotted. On the x-axis we have the time and on the y-axis we have the volume of gas produced. Okay, let's take a look at our equations. The first equation, 5.1, besides the mass of besides the mass and the volume of the reactants, give one other variable that must be kept constant during this investigation. Okay, so besides the mass and the volume of the reactants. We also need to keep the temperature constant. So the answer to 5.1 can be temperature. Why do we need to keep the temperature constant? Temperature affects the rate of reaction. So if we don't control the temperature, then your results will not be conclusive. You're not going to know whether your results are influenced by the state of the division or they're influenced by the temperature. So we need to keep all the other variables constant. We need to control them, hence control variable, and then have a fair test. Okay, that is 5.1. What about 5.2? Write down the dependent variable in this investigation. Well, the dependent variable is essentially what we are measuring, right? We are taking a look at the effect of state of division on the rate of reaction. So what you're measuring here is rate of reaction. It is our dependent variable. It is depending on that which is changing the state of division, which is our independent variable. Okay, 5.2, let's take a look at 5.3. Use the graph to calculate the average rate of the reaction in centimeter cube per second between 2 and 2.5 minutes okay let's go to our graph so between 2 and 2.5 minutes uh, 2 minutes is 120 seconds okay so let's take a look this is 100 this is 150 1 2 3 4 so one block represents 10 centimeters oh well 10 seconds not centimeters so 1 2 so 120 seconds should be here this is where we have 120. 2 to 2.5 minutes. 2.5 minutes, uh, that will be 150 seconds. So it's just 2 minutes plus half of a minute, which is 30 seconds. So 120 and 150 seconds. All right. So let's go ahead and find the corresponding Y values. The corresponding Y values. So let's go up. That is 120 seconds, and this is 150 seconds. And then we can extend this line. We can extend this line so that we can read off our value accurately. Okay, we just don't want to use our naked eye here. We want to take accurate measures. So there we go. There we go. So the rate of reaction. So rate of a reaction will be equals to the change in the volume divided by the change in the time All right why are we using change in the volume we are given the si unit we are supposed to use for a rate of reaction is centimeter cube per second so i'm just respecting that so let's go ahead and find the gradient we need to read off these values here so from 40 to 50 we have one let me just, we have 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it means that 
one block is two units this will be 42 44 46 48 50 so it means that here at 120 seconds we have 42 and at 150 seconds we have 48 so the change in the volume we're going to have 48 minus 42 divided by 150 minus 120 okay there we go so let me just put that in my calculator 48 minus 42 divided by 150 minus 120 that is 0 0.2 so we have 0 0.2 centimeter cube per second there we go that is the average rate between those two points okay um that is question 5.3 let's take a look at 5.4 so 5.4 will the rate of the reaction at 250 seconds be greater than less than or equal to the rate of reaction in question 5.3 give a reason for the answer so in 250 seconds it is going to be less than it is going to be less than okay why do we see that it is going to, be, it's going to be less than because as the reaction progresses of which in our case it is not reversible as you can see the amount of reactants gets smaller and smaller and as we have less number of poles we're going to have less effective collisions so we expect the rate of reaction to actually decrease 5.4 5.5 predict how the gradient of the graph for experiment 2 will compare to that of experiment 1 so in experiment 2 we have ribbon as one large piece and then in experiment 1 we have five smaller pieces so the rate of reaction if in experiment 1 we expect it to be you know higher than that in experiment 2 but what is the equation saying the gradient for the graph for experiment 2 it will decrease the gradient will decrease in experiment two because uh, the rate of reaction will also decrease and um yes the rate of reaction depends on the gradient if the gradient is very steep then the rate of reaction is very high okay that is 5.5 5.6 5 5.6 calculate the mass of magnesium metal that remains in the conical flask when the reaction is stopped, assume that the molar volume is 24 decimeter cube per mole. So the molar volume is 24 decimeter cube per mole at room temperature. Okay, fine. Let's go to our equation. Let's go to our equation. Right, our equation, uh, we have magnesium plus HNO3. And then we get in magnesium NO3 2. Uh, this 2 is here, it's not there. NO3 2 plus H2. Okay, this is the reaction we have. Um, what is the mass of magnesium that you start with? Because it seems like here we are looking for the mass that is remaining. We start with the mass of. 2 grams for both reactions. We start with a mass of 2 grams. So we are bound to use that. So what is the mass of the remaining magnesium at the end of the reaction? How can we possibly do that? Well, we have a graph that shows us the volume of gas produced, right? So what we can do, we can find the number of moles of the gas produced. With the number of moles of the gas produced, we can find the number of moles of magnesium used. With this number of moles of magnesium used, we can find the mass used consequently. And with the mass used and the mass initial that we have, we can find uh, the mass of magnesium that remains. Okay, so these are the steps that we need to take. I keep emphasizing that with these kind of questions, you need your plan fully laid out before you can put pen to paper, All right? Everything just becomes uh, extremely simple. You know what you're going to do, when and why. So go ahead and do that. Number of moles of 
gas produced. We are given our graph, so we need to see where our graph ends here. And can we see that it ends here? I think, yeah, from, from there on until forever, essentially, our our gradient is it's zero. So we have reached the end of our reaction. So let's see, let's take this part. Okay, let's take this part. This is where our reaction ends. Okay, and then we're supposed to extend the line and read off the volume from the graph. So this is the beautiful, well, a beautiful tool. But this is the interesting thing about these questions. You are always given an experiment and you are being a scientist, essentially. You are answering these questions in real time. You've never seen it before, but you have all these skills that you learned, which you need to apply. Okay, so let us see what happens here. Um, let me join these two lines so that we can read off the value. Okay, I think it will be easy to see here that uh, the volume of gas produced is 60 centimeter cube. Okay, so we will see that number of moles is equals to v divided by vm right we've seen that we're going to do that we're going to calculate the number of moles of hydrogen gas of which v is 60 times 10 to the minus 3 that times 10 to the minus 3 converts centimeters to uh, decimeters cube i must emphasize because when you're converting centimeter to decimeter it's not the same thing as you convert in centimeter cube to decimeter cube, right? And then the right VM, VM it is given to us as 24. Okay, so let's take a look. 60 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 24. Uh, this is 0 0.0025 moles. So this is the number of moles of um, the gas produce hydrogen gas. So now the number of moles of hydrogen gas is to the number of moles of magnesium. We have a one is to one relationship, right? The balancing coefficients is one is to one. So here uh, the number of moles of magnesium should also be equals to 0 0.0025 moles. So there we go. We have the number of moles of magnesium that we used. So we can go ahead and calculate the mass of magnesium. So the mass of magnesium that was used will be the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. The number of moles is 0 0.0025. The molar mass of magnesium is 24. So we're going to have multiplied by 24, which is equal to... 0 0.06 grams so not too much of that magnesium was used so the mass of magnesium that remains will be equals to the mass of magnesium that we started with 2 grams minus that which was used 0 0.06 so we end up having the mass of magnesium that remains being equals to 1.94 grams there we go.